invest in the word of God invest in the ministry of the word prayer is powerful but prayer without an understanding of the word will leave you only practicing religious superstition what gives power to prayer is the word compliancy of your prayer did you hear that what gives power to prayer is that it is scripture based word compliant and consistent with the will of God in fact here's how the Bible puts it that this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything in accordance to his will we know that he heareth us so when you pray amiss regardless the kind of energy you dissipate there is a guarantee that it will not be answered hmm. are we together Many believers pray and we do not get answers because we just pray emotionally, superstitiously. We just shout around and yet our prayer is not consistent with scripture. The modus operandi in this kingdom is the word. How things happen is by the word. God's method has always been his word. His method to lift, his word. His method to restore, his word. His method to bless, his word the moment you ignore the word of God and try to get God's result you are not a Christian again the only way God's result comes to you is in compliance to his word now the Bible essentially contains promises principles and prophecies never forget this every time you study your Bible you are interacting with these three realm of realities principles promises God's commitment to you, principles, the modus operandi of the kingdom, prophecies, guiding you to navigate your path through life and destiny. Are we together? Did you get that? So when you open your Bible, you're interacting with promises. The Bible calls them exceeding great and precious promises. You're interacting with principles. The Bible calls them the mysteries of the kingdom, Matthew 13, 11. It has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And then you are interacting with prophecy. Most believers do not invest in the word. Listen, let me tell you this, ladies and gentlemen. You must obtain grace to study the word of God. Why do you need to study the word of God? Because it is important for you to know what God has said. That is the basis of your victory. Even Satan functions by knowing what God has said. He depends on what God has said to you to attack you. Go to the book of Genesis. When he came to man, his first interest was not to attack. What did God say? Because that becomes the basis for my attack. The way Satan fashions weapons is that the weapons have to be anti-Christ, anti-scripture. Are we together? He needs to know what God has told you. Okay, God has said you're going to become a great woman. That becomes the basis of his attack. God has said your third son will be a prophet. He will make sure you get barren at that third pregnancy. Satan only attacks with respect to the speakings of God's word. So if you see Satan coming around your vicinity, is proof he's aware that the word has reached you. Even if you are not aware. His presence is confirmation that the word of God has come to you. <laughs> That's why he's called the thief. What is he coming to steal? Yeah. You think he comes to your life to steal things? No, oh, no. Things only leave because the word left. John 1, 3. All things were made by him, the word, and without him was not anything made that was made. Am I right on that? Yeah. This is powerful. That means if you give yourself to the study of scripture, Acts chapter 20 and verse 32, it says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up, it says, and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. You must damage spiritual ignorance from your life. 
Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their minds. You need knowledge. Say knowledge. knowledge. Please shout it. Say knowledge. knowledge. Now, knowledge. That was the true light. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine. Why? That is the only reason why you will arise. Because your light has come. Not because you are tired of staying in that state. Time does not change anything. It only reveals the consequences of your decisions. If you want things to change, you must bring light. John 1, 5. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Let me quote Isaiah 60 and verse 1 from Amplified. Beautiful rendition. Here's what it says. Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. Hmm. Are we together? Now listen. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, the creation story, that God called the light day and the darkness he called night. Walk with me. He called the light and the darkness he called one more time he called the light and the darkness he called so in God's economy the day is not 6 a.m. 12 a.m. 3 a.m. the day is not when the sun shines the day for you is when your light comes are we together so you can chronologically as we call it you can be at noon and yet you are still in the night and the Bible says with the night comes weeping so when you want to end your night you don't wait for the Sun to rise you bring light because it is only joy is connected with light connected with the morning are we learning now he called the light day and the darkness he called night so for many of us, the sun, as we know it and as we call it, um, the layman's understanding, rising and setting, rising and setting. But in the realm of the spirit, you've never really had day. It's always been night because light has not come. And for someone, you may be living in the night and yet your experience is that of the day because of the abundance of the light. Listen, go back to the word. What has God said concerning your health? What has he said concerning your finances? What has he said concerning your influence? Are we together? The Bible says in Psalm 82 and verse 5, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness, and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But verse 7 says, you shall die like mere men, and fall like one of the princes. I made a covenant with my destiny years ago that I would not be ignorant of the word. I knew my life depended on it. I found your word and I did eat it. It became a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. Please invest in scripture. I caused the spirit of laziness spiritually. Are we together? Wake up in the night and open your Bible. There are three ways to maximize the ministry of the word. Number one, study it. Number two, confess it. Number three, listen to it. You have to study the word. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. Then listen to it. Faith comes by hearing. Get materials. And we, we, we live in an age where it is, it is so easy. There's, there's all kinds of devices. There are the speakings of Jesus, faith confessions on healing, faith confessions on your destiny. All you need to do is go online and pick it up. You don't, I mean, they've saved you the, the, the labor of piecing them together. My phone is full of all kinds of scriptures. And sometimes while I'm praying, I let it play. I may not be conscious, but it's entering into my spirit. I'm not listening for awareness. I'm transporting it to my spirit. Wow. 
Are you learning? So you study scripture, you listen to scripture, and you speak. Don't miss the speaking part. You are not maximizing the ministry of the word if you are silent. Let the redeemed of the Lord. Let the healed of the Lord. Let the blessed of the Lord. Let the great by the Lord. Let the children of the Lord. Let the witnesses of the Lord. It matters that you say so. The righteousness that is of faith speaks. It is not silent. Say so. Say so. I am blessed. Say so. Anointed by the Spirit. Say so. Hmm. Number three. The third key to becoming mighty in the Spirit is that you must contend for spiritual empowerment. You must contend for spiritual empowerment. Is God helping us tonight? You want to be witnesses, you want to be men and women of stature. This was the apostolic model that was handed over to the church. It is not something to alter, it is a pattern, it will not change. The ministry of prayer, in all its ramifications, the ministry of the word, studying the word, speaking the word, listening to the word to feed your spirit man, then now you come to the place of the anointing. Are we together? Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good. Someone say doing good. good. One more time say doing good. good. It takes more than a kind heart to do good. It takes more than empathy and compassion to do good. You need to be anointed to do good. Doing good. And healing all day that were oppressed of the devil. The Bible says for God was with him. The messianic prophecy Isaiah chapter 61. The spirit of the Lord is upon me says. For the Lord hath anointed me. And now it begins to list. To preach glad tidings to the poor. He had sent me to bind up the broken hearted. Look at the category of people. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opening of prison. This is very interesting. That means there are men who seem to be free physically. But in the realm of the spirit they are in prison. All kinds of prisons. To them that are bound. Let's finish the scripture. Verse 2. The Bible says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord all by the anointing and the day of vengeance of our God. Verse 3, to comfort all who mourn by the anointing, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion by the anointing, to give them beauty for ashes, my God, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise still by the anointing, for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees or the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. I receive, I manifest, you know the song? Your power and your wisdom till the nations See Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest. That's your destiny, your power, and your wisdom till the nations. See Jesus lifted up. Glorify, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Listen. I don't have the time to tell you how this prophetic song came 
it's become an anthem in our ministry it's the richest capture a definition of our assignment at its core the anointing becomes for us the power of God and the wisdom of God you want to reveal Christ you need the wisdom of God and the power of God if you have power alone the cosmos will drive you the anointing can translate to wisdom and translate to power this is why we can deliver a lecture in the afternoon and heal the sick in the night wisdom power wisdom power wisdom power are we together 